Hey, it's Anna. I am out in the woods uh, late in October, and I have just found a specimen of the agaricus genus. Um, I'm not going to be able to get it to species. We recently had, I think it was in 2011, a sort of comprehensive study of the different North American agaricus species, which is a pretty large genus. And uh, there's at least 166 of them, so uh, I'm not going to be able to get this to species, even uh, once I do a good bit of research. So the guidance currently is to get as close as you can, and that there's a lot of uh, sort of synonym use. So it's like I have found a species that resembles X, Y, and Z um, is often you know the best way that you can express it, especially if you're just a mushroom hunter and you're relying on visible features or maybe a spore print. If you're really nerdy, maybe some microscope work. Uh, but at any rate, you know the Agaricus genus is very common. Uh, our most um, common edible mushroom probably in the world, the uh, white button mushroom, Agaricus bisporus, is a member of the genus. Um, there are a lot of different forms that that species takes. So if you have a portobello, it's the same species as your white button mushroom. It's just a different uh, sort of um, growing techniques are employed. So anyway, uh, Agaricus does grow in the wild. Many of them are a lot more uh, sort of refined and pleasant than your white button mushrooms. Uh, this is one of them. So there's a couple of distinguishing characteristics for the genus in general that are fairly easy to, uh, to notice. Um, so first of all, um, Agaricus mushrooms are a classic cap and stem mushroom. They have a significant ring on the stem. This one is very fresh, uh, but you can see it is very uh, felty and very consistent all the way around. And it has this sort of like uh, sort of powdery, felty uh, sort of overlay on it. Um, so most of the time when you see an Agaricus, you will see a ring. This one, again, is very fresh, so the ring is very, very uh, prominent. Um, and the ring is formed by uh, what's called a partial veil, which just basically can, you know, covers the mushroom's tissue and uh, protects the spores as they develop. So once it, uh, once it breaks, you'll see uh, the gills, and the gills start out uh, pure white. They're just uh, you know, completely pale. But as the mushroom matures, they turn this uh, lovely sort of pinky color. And uh, the spores of agaricus are uh, universally sort of a chocolatey dark brown. So as the mu mushroom gets older and older, you start to see these really dark chocolatey brown tones. So by the time you get to an agaricus that is fully mature, it looks like your portobello. So, you know, it has uh, very, very dark gills underneath. Um, as you can tell, they also tend to be a little more uh, sort of slender um, than, you know, the store uh, uh, bought varieties uh, of agaricus. You also additionally have uh, a lot of times some texturization on the stem. It can be uh, a little bit uh, faint. In this case, it's actually pretty good. It's sort of a lumpy, bumpy, uh, a little bit scurfy kind of uh, surface. Now, um, agaricus kind of has a, a really common characteristic, which is a yellow staining reaction. So there are a couple of species, uh, primarily agaricus xanthodermis, super common in yards, and it stains bright, bright yellow. Um, it is a toxic species and it smells very toxic. It smells like chemical or people describe it as paste. Anyway, uh, my glue huffing days are long behind me, but um, anytime I feel like I really need to get back to my uh, trailer park roots, I suppose, I can just go and sniff some xanthodermis. That's a very, very strange tangent, but here we are. Uh, so, you know, besides the pink gills that will uh, eventually turn to this dark brown, you um, want to look out for that yellow staining reaction. In this case, we have probably what's a mild stain. You know, it's sort of an, uh, a buff color. It was growing by itself. Both of those things are going to be consistent uh, for certain species. And, um, you know, so I'm going to damage it, spend a little bit of time with it, and see um, you know, to what degree it does or does not stain yellow. And I can see just the very beginnings of, of a slow yellow staining reaction, but, uh, you know, in the case of xanthodermis and a couple of the other uh, agaricus mushrooms, you touch them and they just, you know, bloom uh, with this sort of, you know, sickly yellow color. Uh, but that is not an indicator one way or the other as far as toxicity. It's just a common trait that's really going to help with identification. Um, so, you know, some of these mushrooms are mild and they don't smell like anything. This one in particular uh, has a very, very pleasing um, aroma of almonds. And this is a pretty common feature among the uh, agaricus that are sought after and are really tasty is this very, um, you know, again, sweet aroma. So, you know, essentially you just need to be cautious when it comes to agaricus mushrooms. The ones that are sweet smelling are uh, typically edible and good. Some of the mild ones are similarly quite yum. 
uh, but you do have to look out for those that uh, have, you know, pasty smells. Um, it's also very important to note that because they are a mushroom that comes up with white gills and with a stem, you need to be very conscientious that it is not an Amanita mushroom uh, because we have some very toxic Amanita species. Finally, there's one other genus called Lepiata that also has some similarities. They uh, tend to have this uh, ring on the stem as well, and it tends to look kind of similar, the sort of like, um, you know, felty and consistent layer as opposed to something jagged or random. Um, there are some Lepiatas that are good to eat, some that are not. It's just something to bear in mind that when you're trying to get down to genus, you want to consider uh, Lepiata and um, uh, Amanita, certainly. Uh, at any rate, I'm a really big fan of the ones that are almondy. Um, you know, they're not uh, like a white button mushroom insofar as having a ton of flesh, but they're, um, you know, I guess pleasing flavors more than make up for the uh, lack of heft and stature. <laughs>